Undertaker's the Maiden here for part six of Knuckles Chaotix. And as we go into Botanic Base for the... How many times has it been now? So as we go into Botanic Base for the fifth time, I figure it was about time that I start talking about trivia about the game. That way I still have something interesting to talk about. Even if it is sort of a cheap way to pad out the commentary, at least I'm talking about stuff. For one, again, you probably noticed that Mighty Sprite looks a lot like Sonic Sprite. There's plenty of evidence that sprites from Sonic's role in the unreleased game Sonic Crackers might be the basis of Mighty's appearance in this game. I mean, their sprite sheets are nearly identical to each other. Sonic Crackers was an early Sonic the Hedgehog prototype game for the Genesis that was basically an engine test. It had multiple different game engines swapped out using code written to the RAM. The RAM is basically the short-term memory of a game. Like, the ROM is the long-term memory, and if you save it to the ROM, then it'll still be there in your file when you turn the game off. But anyways, Sonic Crackers had Sonic and Tails joined together by a band of rings, very similar to Knuckles' Chaotix. The game had two adventure levels, one of which appears multiple times in a different color palette each time, as if it's a hub world. So, it would have had two hub worlds then. It kind of reminds me of Sonic Advance 3, where they actually had more than one hub world. In fact, they had more than three hub worlds. And again, you had to constantly go through the level design to get to every single act, and it was tedious and dragged the game out. And again, I hate these elevators. Why do you have to stand in them for so long to get to where you need to go? Why can't, it just, why can't there be a spring there? That would have kept the pace fast going, and brought you up to the next part a lot faster. But anyways, Sonic Crackers also had two field levels, one of which is extremely similar to Techno Tower, mainly that you need to make it to the top of the screen. And I'll talk about that later because we're in the worst boss in the whole entire game. This is the boss of Botanic Base. And it forces you to rely on the controls of your partner pulling you up. But again, it's very easy to not know how they control at this point. So you're constantly, desperately mashing the control pad, trying to figure out what to do. And you try to go to the ground and jump into them from the ground, but as you can see, Vector just got pulled back to the ceiling. Sometimes you can be on the ground, but other times you can't. And look at how slowly I'm being brought to Eggman. Like, I tried to... Like, you're to the south of your partner, and you try to go to Eggman, but you move so slowly left and right. And it was here that I finally figured out that you had to repeatedly tap the control pad upwards to make yourself get pulled upwards. But even then, the physics of it are so weird. Like, it's so... Why are you expected to fight this boss this way? It's so cheap. And it's entirely based around the terrible controls. Why can't... Yeah, that's the... That's the game over screen. That's basically what happens when you die. They were so lazy that they didn't even bother to program in a proper death animation. Your character literally just stands there. He doesn't even have a sad, frustrating animation. He just stands there. And then, uh, a lower pitch version of the victory theme plays. But yeah, you can't get onto the ground, but then something will grab your partner and force him to be in the ceiling again. This bumper can actually be sort of useful because it can allow you to reach the, the boss faster if if Mighty bounces off it, because then he can gain some height that way. But it's so hard to control, like... I'm having a hard time even remembering how I did it. That's how intuitive the controls are. I think I was going left and right, left and right to make him spin me around. But it's so easy to... Like, why does he have to electrify himself? 
Like, it's not hard enough to hit him. Really? It's like, you try to hit him from the ground, but then something grabs your partner, pulls you up again, forces you to rely on a stupid gimmick, and it takes so long to get from one side of the screen to the other. And Eggman moves so fast that it doesn't really give you a fair chance. It's entirely down to luck whether you manage to reach him in time and hit him. This boss drags out forever. And it's so easy to lose your rings and not be able to get them back because they fly off the edge of the screen, you can't collect them. And I had save states for this. Imagine how torturous it would have been playing it on the Genesis with the actual 32X add-on. Imagine how frustrating it would have been because there's no checkpoints in this game. So you die to the boss and you have to go through the entire level all over again. Like, I hate this boss so much. You can't blame me for constantly using save states because it would have taken forever for me to complete this LP. Because I would have constantly died to him and had to go through the entire level all over again. And for what? For the sake of honor? It's like, what honor do I have? I mean, I already... I already play the game on an emulator, so it's not really legitimate anyways. And I already... I already don't usually collect all the Chaos Symbols in 2D Sonic games, so fuck it. I don't care if it's not legitimate. I do things my way. Like, I like being different, I guess. God, I hate this boss. The, th the 32X was basically a console add-on. It was like the Sega CD, but it was 32-bit. The GBA is also 32-bit. I hated that boss so much, and you can see, you can see how much I hated that boss. But anyways, I don't know why they kept trying console add-ons, because they always fail financially. Probably because people think that their console is good enough as it is, and it doesn't need an add-on. And that's part of why the Wii U was a flop in finances. That's part of why the Wii U failed, because people thought from the title that it was an extension of the Wii. So they didn't buy it because they thought their Wii was good enough as it is. And honestly, I think that the Wii is better than the Wii U, if only because of the fact that I can use it as a superior GameCube that doesn't crash on me randomly. Whereas, the Wii U removes backwards compatibility, and if you want to play GameCube games on it, you're forced to buy your GameCube games all over again. Or you can just download a Wii U emulator by accessing the internet from the Wii and then play GameCube games on it that way for free. But anyways... As I was saying, Sonic Crackers has multiple different adventure levels, which are basically hub worlds, and it also has two field levels. It had two because it was... it wasn't finished all that well. Like, it wasn't finished properly. They probably would have had more in the final game. I hate this so much, like, what's the point of getting caught in there? It's not like they're the slot machines where you can get more rings or lives. They just get you points and you're stuck in there for a while. Not really sure how you can get out of there. This drill machine moves way too slowly, and they're too lazy to give it proper... I mean, the wall's crumbling now, but it... When you're in the process of drilling into the wall, there's really no animation to it. It doesn't look progressively more cracked or anything. It feels really lazy. And I'm not usually one to nitpick about graphics, but that's jarring even for me. But one of the two field levels that had the chance to be programmed into Sonic Crackers was very similar to Techno Tower, mainly in the fact that you need to make it to the top of the screen to beat it. If you reach the top, or take three full minutes, then the Sonic 1 Game Over music will play, and the player will get brought back to another field level, which has a cloudy background. So, you get brought back to another hub world. So I'm guessing that means that you have to make it to the top of the screen to beat the level. But the Game Over music plays. 
So I'm hoping that that was just a placeholder and they were going to use a more congratulatory theme later. I'm not really sure how I jumped high enough to get up there, but whatever. The field levels, the field levels were only half completed. Like people have access the have access the Sonic Crackers ROM hackers, and they noticed that it was only half completed in the state that it was found in. In the actual levels of Sonic Crackers, hackers have found that Sonic can walk anywhere in them without consequence because they didn't have the chance to program proper collision detection into it before it was cancelled. If you paused and hit a button, Sonic Crackers would take you to a carnival level similar to Speed Slider that goes around an infinite loop. So, presumably that wasn't finished being programmed either. And after you paused to press another button, you would have gotten brought back to Techno Tower with one of four different color palettes. So, they had plans to... So it was just like they had the day and night system and saw crackers too. There's also a special stage selection in the level selection menu. But hackers have discovered that it wasn't fully programmed because selecting crashes the game. And here's the boss of Techno Tower. Every fifth act of a, of a level has the boss. And again, the game's biggest problem is that it has five acts instead of three. I kept reloading the state because I wanted to make it to the end of the level without getting hit so that I could get a special stage. But this boss is really... it has a really easy time hitting you because the, bo the, the swinging arm things will pop out at you from the edge of the screen without warning. And it's pretty much impossible to not be hit by them, especially since you're not at the leftmost side of the screen when you're attacking it. You're not the left side of the screen, you're at the center or the right center. So when, when it's swinging arms come at you from the right edge of the screen, then you don't have much time to react to it, or you're being sent forwards with momentum, and so there's really no way you can dodge it. Other than that, the boss is pretty easy. Like, all you do is you jump into the weak spot and then it dies. It's just that good luck beating it without getting hit. It's like the bosses in Sonic Chaos and Triple Trouble. You can't beat them without getting hit, but actually beating them is not that hard. And we're almost done with Speed Slider. Which is a shame, because I like this level. It's, it's designed the most like a Sonic level should be. Like, there seems to be alternate routes, there's, there's slopes and loops everywhere, like there's actual loops! But you don't see much loop-de-loops in this game. Unfortunately, this... Like, why did I have to jump to a button to progress? It, it doesn't add anything positive, it's not fun, it just... It just increases the amount of time that you're gonna be in the level. It's just padding, that's all it is. I don't really have much to say about the invincibility theme. Like, it's there, it's okay, I guess. One of the annoying things about standing on platforms that move you around is that you have to have your partner be standing on it pretty close to you in order for them to start moving. So sometimes I have to carry my partner into the elevators because the elevators won't move around if your partner's not in them with you. And your partner, it's kind of hard to get him to to get closer to you. He sort of... He has the AI at Tails. From... From the Sonic and Tails mode. He moves the way you do with a second delay. So it can be kind of hard to get him to stand on the platforms with you. So that they do what you want. That's why it can be useful being able to carry your partners. But even then, you have to put your partner down or you won't be brought around by the elevator. Again, that music's repetitive. See you in the next part.